Hello everyone. So today I just want to talk about how you are valuable. Every single person is valuable. We don't really know how we fit into this web of humanity, into the web of the multiverse. All the little interactions that we have in our day-to-day -day lives, all the people we care for, whether it be family or friends, or just people we kind of know, we make up a grander web than we can completely conceive of or understand the purpose of. Being beings that are kind of trapped in time, you know, the human beings mentally came up with time. Time doesn't actually exist. Time and space and with a, a lack of senses that can truly perceive everything, um, it's really hard to see how each and every single one of us is part of a net. But this, we, every single individual is important for making up the fabric of reality. Everything is birthed or becomes a thing for a reason. And the reason may not be immediately evident, or it may seem like we don't really serve a purpose at all. Or perhaps, you know, we feel like in our darkest moments that we, we serve like a purpose to take apart everybody else, but that's just a, a misunderstanding of the web. Um, so it's, it's incredibly hard for us as individuals to see ourselves as having value or self-worth just inherently because we exist. Um, but not, everything happens for a reason. It's not so much that there's some kind of plan per se or like there's this external God looking down upon us being like, okay, well, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, and kind of making everything happen. Since we're all a part of the source and we're an extension of the source and beings in our own right at the same time with our own free will, um, we are all expressions of something that is far bigger than us, but we are all necessary expressions. And we, we are here to find ourselves, to realize our power, and to have the interactions with everybody else in the web that, uh, and, you know, a more pessimistic person would be like, oh, a spider's web. Not quite. It's more like a mesh, kind of like a solar panel, um, uh, all working in conjunction and feeding into each other. Um, but it's, it's, uh, it's difficult to see exactly how we fit in, but every single one of us does fit in, and every single one of us is necessary. Even animals, um, lesser developed beings, who haven't gone through as many lifetimes to reach a lifetime to where they have become more conscious as a human being, or something higher than a human being. Even animals, every single animal, you know, it's like, oh, we have all these cats and dogs, we have all these animals around. Every single form of life matters. Not just because life is valuable, which it is, very valuable, but because every single part of the web is necessary. That's why, you know, counterfactuals or what ifs in regards to history are kind of, they're interesting, but kind of irrelevant. Or counterfactuals in terms of spirituality, like what if this happened? Uh, what if, you know, what if this is the way things work? I mean, like, I, I'm not trying to go against anybody's spiritual traditions or whatever, and everything makes sense in a certain light and through certain perceptions. But, uh, you know, at least when it, in terms of history, um, when counterfactuals or like <clears throat> what if questions, everything happened because that's the only way it could happen. All the pieces of the web, even down to animals and insects and plants, every piece of the web manifested and did what it was going to do as an extension of everything else. That doesn't mean we don't have an extension of the source. That doesn't mean we don't have free will. And it doesn't mean that the source is looking down like, oh, this person's really going to mess up, like it knows what we're going to do. Everything's happening all at once. And everything is doing, um, is and is doing the expression that needed to happen. So we might ask ourselves, like, why do people do terrible things? Um, and you should not cause pain or injury to, ev to anyone. Um, but when it comes to karma, that person will be punished through karma and that soul needed to go through that punishment. They needed to realize and not do this, but inherent in that soul, there might've been something that like wanted to enact violence or terrible things, but it'll also reap the same, it'll also reap punishment. Um, the source has all different parts of our, of itself that are so seemingly contradictory or fighting with one another or they're, uh, you know, different ideas fighting against each other, different traditions. Um, or if it's just atheism uh, against like super dogmatic Christians or anything like that, everything seems like it's in conflict. And it kind of is on a ground level, but it's no more in conflict than the microorganisms in our, in our bodies kind of fighting or looking for resources or getting resources ahead of 
other bacteria or something like that. There's, there's all kinds of chemical, even chemical wars going on within our own bodies. Uh, we cry because um, when our nervous system, our brain kind of like builds up cortisol or stress hormone, it needs to release that. It needs to release stress. And we cry because, you know, not just, uh, you know, I'm using the sad example, but when we're sad, we cry because we're releasing that stress hormone. We're like little chemistry sets, <laughs> every single person, every single being. And uh, to really stress hormone, we cry when we're sad. Uh, but when we're happy, it can also kind of overload our brain and be like, it's, oh, so much we cry. And it, it even happiness can kind of like cause an overload. Um, every, all these little chemical interactions, the reason I'm pointing them out is because there's all these little things happening within us that we're not even aware of. All these little things happening within us that, you know, even if they're different, like even bacteria life forms that are smaller than us, less aware than us, they're just, everything's happening, whether it's aware within us or not. And it's not, <laughs> but, um, on a grander scale, you know, for us and on a grander scale, not everything is aware of its place. Even gods and spirits are not omnipotent or, um, uh, uh, or omniscient. They are all fi They are all performing their role in their place. When it comes to people or, or beings doing bad things, um, you shouldn't do them. And if you choose not to do them, then that's what's meant to happen. They do do something bad, then that was meant to happen. But that doesn't mean that somebody who does something bad um, won't get punished through karma. And, uh, and since everything is a part of the source, the source isn't necessarily good or evil. Since, you know, since there's this balance and there's these different conflicts and there's these varieties of peace and there's these varieties of punishment and varieties of even cruelty, it's all part of the source. It's all expressions of the source, all extensions of the source. So it, the source doesn't make people do bad things, doesn't make beings do bad things, and doesn't make them do good things. Everything is within the same body that is the source. And, you know, it's not like a linear body where it has an outline. It's a vaster, you know, virtually infinite um, multidimensional body. And then beyond that, it is infinite. Um, so it's, and you know, it also brings us to the idea, you know, why, you know, why couldn't the source with, if it has enough goodness, why couldn't it just allow its expression to have no pain, to have no suffering? And there's something being resolved in the source, not a fully resolved uh, totality. Not a fully resolved entity in all its vastness. It's almost like everything that's happening within the source is a conversation with itself and actions against itself, different parts of itself. To experience itself, yes, but there's something being resolved, something being realized through all this action, through all this interaction with itself. So, you know, with the multiverse being so vast, we exist, every single thing exists because it's supposed to exist. Even if you don't like the idea of everything happens because, you know, it's part, it's part of the source working itself out and, you know, experiencing the downsides of doing this and the upsides of doing that, different parts of the work, even if you don't like that part of it. And you don't have to accept that. You don't have to accept any of this, but even if you don't accept that part, if you look at, if you, at the very least, understand that every single person, every single life form, every single piece of consciousness that becomes uh the uh kind of like the thing that is inside of animated material and even material itself is conscious to a lesser degree every single part of the web that means you that means me is necessary and it couldn't have been any other way every single one of us was always meant to be you are meant to be here. You are meant to live. You are meant to experience. You are meant to suffer. You are meant to be happy. You are meant to know other people, to to do your best to help other people, and to allow them to help you. You are a necess necessary part of the web, is what I'm trying to say. Do not think that you are irrelevant. No matter how small you feel, no matter how ignored or isolated that you feel, and this is kind of a conversation with myself as well, because I feel ignored and isolated and lonely. I felt very lonely recently. And, you know, I've been seeking, you know, I've had many relationships, but I've been seeking a romantic partner that I can have, that I can have, you know, a true spiritual connection with, true emotional connection with, you know, it's be physical attraction too, but have a deeper uh, connect, appreciation of and connection with mutual between me and that woman. And I haven't found her yet. So, and you know, I've always been looking and I've had all these different relationships and I, I've realized that all these different relationships where it didn't work out was teaching me a new lesson, but I can learn 
with that person that I'm meant to be with and not mess up or, you know, look for warning signs if the other person is not her and, and it's actually going to be a toxic relationship. All these, you know, failed relationships, all these failed interactions, they were all to teach me how to be a better man for the woman that I'm going to find. And it can be happen in reverse or if you're if you're uh, part of the LGBTQ community, maybe you're a woman looking for a woman or a man looking for a man, that's fine. But I feel like all of our failed relationships, um, they were all a part of the web that we're kind of brushing up against or feeling the vibrations from or interacting with to find the part of the web that we're meant to to be with, to call a home. Because when we enter into a relationship, a romantic relationship or any kind of relationship, even a, even a friendship, we're looking for a home that we don't feel by ourselves. We don't feel in isolation. And some, you know, and some people, maybe that's not that, that's not their, going to be their reality or their, um, I wouldn't want to say destiny, but not their lessons in this one lifetime, perhaps a future lifetime. And maybe that's true for me, I'm not sure. But, um, I know that despite everything, everybody being a part of the web, everybody, everybody being vital, and despite having all these negative interactions in these relationships, um, all of it was helping me and the other person um, in these failed relationships, all these different uh, women, um, we were all learning something. Us, both of us was, was learning something. And we're all, it's almost like we're a part of a grander web and think of like a like a big spider's web or a rope net and then consciousness we're just traveling around through the tubes if you will of this spider web or this rope net and we're trying to find the part of the web where we fit exactly but through interaction through um through interaction through contemplation and through um communication we're actually forming a more stable web we're, we're holding reality together by interacting with other people, by allowing these exchanges, even if they're negative, to take place and learning from them. That is what forms the fabric of reality. And that's how we understand it as human beings. A plant or an animal might not understand it that way, but they're still a part of it. They might feel it more inherently. And it's said that animals are the only ones who can truly see Shiva if, they're, if you're not enlightened, they just, they just see them. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I digress. At any rate, you are valuable. Your experiences, while they be painful, and I'm saying this to myself as well, while they be painful, very painful, almost feels like we're about to give up or just be like, I don't want to live anymore. We can choose to learn from them. We can choose to see their value and realize that it is not inherent that we're going to be happy for our entire lives or that... Um, you know, we're going to, or we're even going to find a place in that web. But everything, everything, every person, every being is meant to be here and have those interactions, even if they don't always work out. And even if there isn't a happy ending. But there definitely could be. And we don't know that. So if we truly want something or someone, we have to keep trying because we don't know. And you can even argue that the source doesn't know. Everything's happening all at once, but if time doesn't exist and there is no end and there is no beginning, so experience just is. It's almost like the three-dimensional cross where it's, you know, time, space, and then consciousness. Consciousness in this, in various incarnations, and definitely an in incarnation of you that's listening to this, consciousness is what traverses space and time and is that um, third part of the three-dimensional cross. Um, and con that's why we sometimes have memories that feel like, or like we have experiences that feel like we've already been here or had, or remember, or like we're remembering, but in live action. Um, consciousness is interesting like that because it doesn't have to play by time and space rules. It just is. Um, and we can choose to feel that consciousness behind our, behind the words, behind the experiences, behind the day-to-day -day life that consciousness, that grander consciousness is always there for us to touch. And if it if it's in us, and it's in you if you're listening to this or watching this, then you are a vital part of this grander exchange that is happening within the source. You are valuable. Don't forget that. And even in your darkest hour, there's always a way out. There's always 
another person or another thought that can lead you out of that darkness, no matter how long you feel like you've been there. At any rate, thank you very much for watching. Hope you found this interesting. If you found this interesting at all or liked it at all, feel free to hit that thumbs up down there on YouTube. It greatly helps uh, people find this video. And uh, feel free to leave a comment as well. I'll answer any questions that you have. As long as they're not like mean or anything like that or just like saying cuss words, I'm, I'm willing to answer questions. Um, and if you just want to leave a comment to attract attention to the channel, that also helps out the channel as well. Just leave a comment down there. You can just say like, oh, great video, something like that. That also helps. And uh, if you want to become a patron, go to patreon.com at uh, patreon.com slash darkrealist, capital D, capital R. And uh, if you go to patreon.com slash darkrealist, um, I share all my videos there and my podcasts. And uh, I share little ritual uh, pictures and ritual journal pictures that give you a little bit of insight into my personal um, craft and spiritual life. Um, than you see in my videos, and I only share those on Patreon. But overall, if you just want to give me a dollar a month just to be like, hey, I like your content, here's a dollar a month, that's great too, and I'd greatly appreciate that because the more patrons I have, the more uh, more content, I, the more time I can put aside to make content for all of you. So if you like any of my content, feel free to become a patron on patreon.com slash darkrealist. At any rate, thank you very much for watching. Feel free to share this video. You are valuable. Um, just as valuable as I am. Never forget it. And thank you all for watching.